Since the news of the Aquarium Madu's arrest in London, Arise News has been keeping up with the developments. And to bring us more on this case is Arise International Correspondent Adefemi Akinsaya. Good morning, Adefemi. Can you tell us with regards to updates? Good morning to you, Tundu, and good morning to you all. Well, we are all gathered inside the courtroom. I've actually stepped out so we could speak and give you this update. The hearing itself hasn't formally started. It's believed that they are waiting for one of the defendants to arrive uh, on the premises. It seems as though there's been some sort of delay in Beatrice Ekwemadu's transport in getting into court. So that's what's causing the delay. So it's expected that the hearing uh, will start around 11 uh, local time. It was slated to start around 10 a.m. so there is a little bit of a delay but just to go over the particulars of this case both the former C uh, C Deputy Senate President uh, Ike Ekoramadu and his wife Beatrice have been and remained in police custody uh, since it's been 14 days now and they've gathered now and they're expected to appear both of them here at the Westminster Magistrate Court in order to determine whether or not this case can proceed within the British legal system. This is continuing to be uh, a case and a topic of jurisdiction. Does the UK Prosecution Service, the Crown Prosecution Service, have the jurisdiction to prosecute this case within the United Kingdom because of its origin starting in another country, namely Nigeria? So that is what we're expected to find out today. Uh, we know that instead of there being a series of magistrates as there were in Uxbridge, today it's just the one judge sat down who will be making the decision who will be making a decision on whether or not this case will proceed. So for now, it is definitely a, the waiting game. But I do want to let you know that from the earlier uh, hearings that I've been at, uh, to this one, it's been a vast difference. Firstly, the location has changed. We've gone from uh, Oxbridge, just in the outskirts of northwest London, and now we are in at Westminster and it's believed that this court would be able to give uh, more of a, a senior response to this question about jurisdiction. I want to also let you know that there is a huge Nigerian presence in court today. Uh, the Nigerian delegation from the Nigerian High Commission here in the UK are in presence. We've got many ministers in terms of people who have formerly been ministers we've also got the 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 senate president who Ike Ekoromadu served under Mark he is also in court today we've also got the uh, the minister of state for education and other senior high level Nigerian delegates here in court today the public gallery sits around 45 people and it's almost packed as press there, there's a separate enclosure that we can sit inside the courtroom itself but what just behind us is the public gallery and that is packed and it's far different from the experience that we saw in Uxbridge two weeks ago and even a week ago which is when we found out that's when Arise found out that the latest hearing would be here in Westminster so again we are waiting for both defendants to appear and that's what's causing the delay but it is quite uh, a huge showing of support for the Ekoromadu family but just over my shoulder you should be able to see people holding up placards people who have it's obviously not a huge uh, scenery in terms of protest but the presence is still there and still being felt these are people who are protesting against the the or traffic organ um, harvesting and organ trafficking and there are also smaller media outfits here personal bloggers who are here discussing and showing their disdain for the the charges summed against them but as it stands now this is going to be a question we believe of jurisdiction can this case against the former deputy senate president and his wife Beatrice continue within the uk legal system or not uh, thank you so much for that adefemi adefemi another point i'd like to make is the case of a bail. Is that on the cards today? It's unlikely and it's also not clear whether or not bail is going to be something that happens. If a final decision is made today, and I don't want to speculate because what's the use of that? That's what we've got a courtroom for. But if a final decision is made today, and hypothetically speaking, the judge, the senior district judge, Dodge Tammy Ikram, says that this case cannot proceed within the United Kingdom, then it would be believed perhaps that there is 
the very serious possibility that both defendants would be released from police custody in the United Kingdom, but that is unclear at this stage. Also, when it comes to bail, whether or not they will be granted so, it's up to their legal representatives. Uh, talking about the legal representatives, initially, at the very first hearing, both of the defendants, Ike and Beatrice, were, were represented by two different lawyers. It's believed now that they are both going to be represented by just the one. Or it could be a situation that because the former Senate Deputy Senate President is already here, although he hasn't actually come into the courtroom, the reason why we haven't seen Beatrice's lawyers because she is still making her way from prison. But talking about bail, it's unclear. We will obviously be listening and following on these proceedings to find out whether or not bail will make it on the cards. But first and foremost, the issue to iron out here is to find out whether or not the United Kingdom has a jurisdiction to prosecute this case any further. Central to this case, apart from jurisdiction, is the age of the complainant, whether or not he's a minor, this gentleman, David Mwamini Upo. And the Aquarium Madrus have scored a legal victory here in Nigeria with um, the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, being ordered by a court to release a certified true copy of the biodata of that person who is making this accusation against them. How do you think that this will go across in the UK? Because this information is supposed to be released to our Attorney General here for submission to the UK government. How do you think this might impact the case against the Aquarium Matters? Well, just earlier on, uh, while we were gathered, before we were let into the courtroom, there were utterings of the prospect of a dental records check being used to certify the true age of the alleged victim. If that does happen in court, because of, of us being in the United Kingdom, we'll be bound by court order not to disclose, I believe at this point, obviously the identity of the alleged victim. But it's going to be obviously quite an interesting topic because that that lays into the crux of this story, whether or not the alleged victim is a victim because of age or not. That's what we're still unclear about. And it's obviously something that we've been able to, to hear and keep abreast of because of these two worlds colliding with the Nigerian media space and the space in the United Kingdom. There are certain details that have been released publicly in Nigeria that because of court order in the United Kingdom, we haven't been able to say or speak about, namely the name of the alleged victim and his and their identity. So looking forward now to this hearing, again, it's going to be, we're hoping for a bit more clarity in terms of this legal process, whether or not this, what you've suggested could happen, the sharing of data, the, the confirmation of age, but then that's all a secondary issue. If it is determined by the, the, the judge in question today, if he does determine that this case can proceed, then the motions can be set aside when it comes to whether or not the alleged victim is the victim in this case or not. But for now, what everyone is focused on is jurisdiction. It's almost the first stumbling block. If that can be cleared, then perhaps the ideas and, and attempts for bail can be reissued because then it seems as though this case would be in for the longer term but for now it's it's very difficult to foresee what's going to happen because of this jurisdiction issue you'll remember that two weeks ago we were in Uxbridge that's when they first appeared first formally identified themselves and first made an application for bail which was denied and they were remanded in prison for 14 days however a week ago Ike Ikwaramadu was in court at Uxbridge and his appearance wasn't widely known but it is believed that again jurisdiction was the cause for his appearance. Beatrice Ekwere Moradu was not able to attend last week's hearing because of a problem with the transport getting from her prison uh, to the courtroom in Uxbridge. So here we are out stood outside Westminster Crown Court, Westminster Magistrate Court rather where we're expecting both parties to appear and it's going to be Finally, it seems the opportunity that many people have been waiting for to find out whether or not the United Kingdom can prosecute this case further. And if that is determined, hypothetically speaking, then we'll be open to what happens next in terms of determining and truly verifying the age of the alleged victim in this matter. Much uh, for your time, uh, Femi, and we will get back to you in the course of today to know what's happening as regards that case, right?